So we are we are recording so that we can also share with others who are not around. Now we are starting with our last setting, the setting that messed us up. The setting that messed us messed us up. So let's start with that one. Question one of April 2022. So April 2022, we start with question number one. April 2022, question number one. So let's see how far we can go for today. Being the day one, we are Nanza Kujiri Bolet, Now, Tritop Limited, Tritop Limited is considering an investment project in the tourism industry, one, 48 million, which will be diversification from the mainstream activities. So the investment is 48 million, no problem. The shillings 48 million project cost will be financed as follows. 10 million using internal funds, 20 million using rights issue, and 18 million with long term loans. Rights issue that is equity. Internal funds don't incur the flotation of the issue costs, but equity will have to incur the flotation of the issue costs, and even the long term debt or long term loans will have the flotation costs, right? The investment is expected to generate pre tax net cash inflows of approximately 14 million per year for a period of 10 years currently. So, 14 million per year for a period of 10 years. The residual value of the, uh, the residual value at the end of the 10 year period will be 15 million after taxes. No problem. Considering an investment project in the tourism industry worth 48 million, which will be a diversification from the mainstream activities. The 48 million shillings project will cost, uh, cost will be financed as follows 10 million using internal funds, 20 million using rights issue, and 18 million with long term loans. So you have internal funds, rights issue is about equity, and we have the loans. Rights issue and loans will attract the flotation costs. We don't incur any flotation costs when you're using the internal funds. They're already there, we are not issuing them. So no issue of flotation costs there. The investment is expected to generate pre-tax net cash inflows of approximately 14 million per year for a period of 10 years. So 10 years, 14 million annually. Annually is annuity. annuity is the more notable two? No. The more notable two. 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 is the two. Lump sum the one. Amity the two. The 48, is it 48 or what? The 14 million is coming in annually for 10 years, year one to year, to year 10. The residual value at the end of the 10 year period will be 15 million after taxes. As the investment is in an area where the government wishes to develop, a subsidized loan of 8 million out of the total 18 million is available. Mbuka Paleju, 18 million also come from the loans. Out of the 18 million, 8 million will be subsidized. And it will cost 2% below the company's normal cost of long term debt finance, which is 8%. So 2% below the 8%. Aha, uh -huh. additional information. The company's equity beta is 0 0.85. The Hamada model is there, equity beta bar and pay. So the equity beta is 0 0.85 and its financial gearing is 60% equity and 40% debt by value. So currently the firm is geared, right? The firm has debt. And that's why we have the equity better, the yield better. The average equity better in the tourism industry is 1.2, and average gearing is 50% equity and 50% debt by market value. No problem. 
We are very much interested with where we are going to invest, not where we are, where the project will be undertaken, not where the company is experiencing right now. The risk free rate is 5.5% per annum. The return on the market is 12%. Issue costs are estimated to be 1% of debt financing, excluding the subsidized loan, and 4% for equity financing. These costs are not tax allowable. Operation tax is 30%. The adjusted present value of the proposed investment project. Now, when you talk about the adjusted present value, It is, an, it is an improvement of the NPV, the net present value. But the difference is that NPV considers both the financing and the investment aspects of the, of the project. You remember the formula of NPV? We have best case NPV, right? Then we less present value of issue costs, issue costs on equity and issue costs on debt. Then you also less, we well, will add, sorry, present value of interest tax shield. And the answer gives us what? Our adjusted present value. So that now, there's other than this case, NPV, let's put together and after your Lakupa chance of the Rukuku, we are linked up. So, best case NPV, it also has its own steps, it's the normal NPV. But the most important thing, the difference between the best case NPV and the normal NPV is that. Best case NPV, we have to get the cost of capital, and the discounting factor is the unlevered cost of equity. So here, we need first of all to get the cost, the, the discount factor, the cost of capital. Cost of capital equals to KE, which is RF plus what? RM minus RF, we multiply by what? The asset better, not the equity better the unlevered cost of equity. So, the unlevered cost of equity, the bar. So, Kazi Iko, now what does it out after the bar? We have different formulas that can be applicable, depending with the school of thought. But you can get the bar, formula is B times we can use the value of equity, we divide by the value of equity plus the after tax value of debt. I find that to be more direct. So that come on at a cafe, I simply interchange this one, this I didn't give it. So this is the only the, the one to play around with. But you also have to have is another version of bar. Fortunately, for part B. So, much more than your shop, some buy the cutter and get to a formula for part B. For the book, for Amanda formula. That's an alternative model, but I find this one to be a little bit easier to memorize so that if I want the equity better, I simply cross multiply. This one comes to the numerator, this one comes to the, the denominator, unlike in school. So, so. Now, we have the pay, and remember, we are very much interested in where we are going to invest, not where we are. Not where we are. Okay, so Alice, welcome. We are doing class sitting question one. You don't know if you have the paper. Now, we are diversifying into the into which, into which business, into the tourism industry. Studio. Do you have the asset, the equity better in the tourism industry? One point. One point two. We are all there, right? Yeah, not number two. The average equity better in tourism. So BE is one point two. 
value of the equity is it 50 percent 0.5 value of debt is also 0 0.5 and the tax rate we have it we've been told is 30 percent 0 0.3 so therefore we are having our bar to be equals to bear of 1.2 times the value of equity is 0 0.5 divided by 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 we have just formed. We have just, can I do 0 0.7? 1 minus 0 0.3. 1 minus 0 0.3. We expect to we expect it to be less than 1.2. Seven or six it's coming from the current still. So very good. Seven zero six. Well, that's the thing that we found. Now, let us count our annual. Now we need to get our KE. KE. Do you have the risk free rate of return? RF to the Five point five, right? So five point five. The expected return on the market. Twelve. In additional information minus 5.5, then we multiply by the bar, which is 0 0.70706. 0 Ten point zero eight. So ten point zero eight. So therefore, to the end, we are Initial outlay is how much? Is it forty million? The project was to cost forty eight million. Initial outlay is shillings forty eight million. We did not have any investment in working capital. It is not a replacement decision. So we don't have the incidental cost, the installation cost and what have you. So our initial outlay is 48 million. Uh -huh. So we need the annual net cash flows. Annual net cash flows. Yeah. Can we do year one to ten? In millions of shillings. In millions of shillings. So you can start 
and we start with our annual earnings before depreciation and tax, the pre-tax cash loss. 14 million, right? So kila mwaka tunapata 14 million kwa miaka kumi. Right? We less what? We less the tax. Let's go the shortcut way. But then we less depreciation, we less tax, and we'll back. Let's do the shortcut and clarify shortly. Come to look at the depreciation. This one is a, is a shorter version. So tax at 30%. Four point two. Then we add depreciation tax shield. So depreciation tax tax on depreciation. Tax on depreciation. The cost was forty eight, right? Salvage value is how much? I say fifteen. That is our annual depreciation, right? Then we multiply by the tax rate, which is 30%. Then we add what? Eight minus fifteen by ten. Nine nine. Zero point nine nine. That gives us our annual net cash flows. Which would be ten point seven nine. Now let me try to go the long cut so that we understand where it's coming from. For the sake of CC, you got to that. Depending on the, the approach that our respective lecturers do. Yeah. Now, alternatively, Tungazia for earnings before depreciation and tax of 14. Apart from the next name, depreciation. Right? Our depreciation is 48 minus 15 divided by 10. How much? 3.3. Then we have our earnings before tax, which is uh, 10.7, 10.7, yeah. we less what, we less tax, tax rate is 30% of 10.7, 3.21, 3 yeah. we get our earnings after tax, 7.49. Then we add back what? We add back the D, right? Which is 3.3. 3. Does it take you back 10.79? But which one is faster and easier? But today they will as well. To the 10.75. Yeah, I think this is, a, this is a shorter version and very elegant. Once you memorize it, life becomes very easy. But like, less add back, yes, you can leave it for the class. Get to achieve the class there. Oh, <laughs> that's okay. Positive yeah, just... <laughs> well, see, well, DPS, thing in Canada. So, so, but I have one I have one 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 issue with that one. And the issue that I have with this format is sometimes unapata uh sometimes unapata let me just try forget about this one a little bit. Let me let me deviate a little bit this question. So, so you get that. The depreciation, the earnings before, but after the, uh, the earnings before depreciation and tax is 14, right? You're supposed to less depreciation. The depreciation, but is 16. 
to get that. You're supposed to get the earnings before tax, which will be negative what? Negative two. Then you're supposed to less what? To less tax. Do you less tax or you less the cash? You less the cash. Because in finance, we don't make losses. In finance, we make either positive profits or negative profits. If it's a minus, then I'll do the 30% of two, which is 0 0.6, right? But the 0 0.6, because I'm getting it from a negative, it will be a positive. So that I come and add back a dip of 16 to get my net cash flows. But if I use this other approach, is it shita has it a because I'll simply start from my 14, then I add the DTS. DTS is equal to 30% of 16. Tax on depreciation. So I'll simply do 16, 16 times 30%. Which is? So I do here the 4.8. Then upper Sintakwa, Nimeles, the tax. So upper Nimeles tax, the 30%. Then you may add the DTS, which is 4.8. I'll get the same answer as this one. But here is where I always have a problem with this long approach. If you know, you will not be confused by such kind of scenario, then when I put, you can do it. But in my own honest opinion, I find this approach to be very fast and direct, and you can never mess it up. So, yeah, the, no, it's just the normal one. The difference is instead of doing the depreciation, then you add back the depreciation. Just do the depreciation, you multiply by the tax rate. That is what we call the depreciation tax shield, tax on depreciation. Then how to less to now add back? So, yes, sir. Yes, but I'm not happy. I can now wrap. Uh, we still have some little space to use. We have the terminal cash flows. Terminal cash flows. There was a scrap value. Scrap value was 15 million, right? So the scrap value of machine which is 15 million. Adjusted present value is always a little bit long question. They involve a lot. It's a question that when, when they test eight marks, the way they test the nine marks, it's too little for it, because you can spend them more than 30 minutes. Hi. So we need to get our best case. Best case NPV. The cost of capital was 10.08. And we do roughly 10% for the sake of the tables. I can use 10%. Okay. So I have the 10.79 annuity or lump sum. Annually or once? Annually. Thank you. For how many years? For 10 years. So that is annuity. Table one or table two? Table two. Annuity is table two. So therefore, I have 10.79 times PV farm. 10% for how many years? For 10 years. Then I add, they have 15 times PV, PVIF, 10% after 10 years, I guess the initial average was that, which was 48. So we check in table two, that is 10.79 times 10% 10, 10 years. Which is 6 point. One four, one four four six plus fifteen times zero point
Positive. But 4.08. Ah, that is the first bit. So that is our best case NPP. That is only part one of it. Too much work for eight months. That is the one is at eight months. This is, the, this is the time you always say that that I'm at, at an advanced level. Hi, turn up for the second part, present value of issue costs. Present value of issue costs. So we have amount from rights issue. Rights issue is the equity, right? Paragraph two, basic 20 million. So 20 million will be raised from the equity. So what is the issue cost? On equity, note number five, right? I think 4% of equity. Equity is 4%, still. So at 4%. Now there's always a challenge associated with this thing. The project should be able to finance itself. What do I mean by that? Even the flotation of the issue cost should come from the funds that I'm raising to undertake the project. So if the flotation cost needs 4%, then the amount raised from for the amount, the amount went to the project should be the remaining balance to 96%. So that the issue cost of 4% plus the amount to raise should give you the total of what? 100%. So the 20 million should actually take care of that balance. I want to raise 20 million by issuing the ordinary shares, right? But by issuing the ordinary shares, there'll be a cost of 4%. I don't go elsewhere to get the funds to finance that project, but the project should finance itself. So the 4% should form part of the total amount that I'll get from what? The ordinary shares. Right together. So now we have like you, Lisa, come up on your 100, so that's up 96%. So if 96% equals to 20 million, what will be 4%? So our issue cost becomes four over what? 26 times 20. So if 96% equals to 20 million, what will be 4%? Four so four over 96 times 20? Zero point H3. H3. Then you have the other loan. So you have amount from loan. Which one attracts the issue cost? Subsidized or unsubsidized? Lot number five. Unsubsidized. Thank you. And subsidized. 
So how much is the unsubsidized loan? The total amount from loan was 18 million. Out of the 18 million, 8 million is subsidized. Yeah. So you're having 18 minus 8. So by having 10 million. And what is the issue cost on that? I think 1%. So that is 1%. So therefore, the issue cost 1% is plus the 99% should give us the answer. Right? So the 10 million should form the 99%. So I do 1 over 99 times 10. The project I have. One percent is the cost of raising the ten million. So ten million is what the company requires to invest, and we say that the project should be able to finance itself. So if one percent is the flotation cost, then if I take the flotation cost plus the amount that the project requires, it should give me the total amount to raise from them. So I will not borrow the ten million alone. But I'll have to borrow the 10 million plus the cost of getting the 10 million. No, you can never borrow 101%. The total amount you're borrowing is 100%. <laughs> so that if I'm borrowing 100%, I already need 1% to be the issue cost. So the remaining 99% should go to the project. And I already know what 99% is. I'm only at 10 million. So if 99% equals to 10 million, what will be the 1%? 1 over 99. Yeah. That gives us how much? 0 0.101. Zero point one oh one million. That covers the second part. Issue cost on debt and equity. Now, Mr. Ma, the issue cost are not tax allowable. Oh, yeah? Yes. The total loan that you raise is 10 million plus 0 0.101. So you have to borrow 10.101 million. So that out of the 10.101 million, 0 0.101 will take care of the flotation cost, and the 10 million will go and finance the project. The same scenario in the rights issue. I have to raise 20 plus 0 0.83. So from the rights issue, I must raise 20.83 million. 0 0.83 flotation costs. 20 million, it finances the project. Finally, number three, working number, this working number two, we need to get the present value of interest tax sheet. Present value of interest tax sheet. Now, the examiner was silent on the repayment period of the loan. I come up with silent on the repayment period it's always advisable to make your life easier. Assume the loan was repaid within one year. And if you assume the loan was repaid within one year, then you avoid preparing the loan amortization schedule. So simply get the interest, get the tax on interest because you need a tax ship and you discount for the one year. So therefore, to go on a loan spill, you know, loan spill. So here, we just say assuming loan. Assuming a one year loan. Then the examiner was a little bit vague. He did not clarify. These are loans that for after how long? How much that for for how long? So we make our life easier. We assume the loans are for one year. So can we start with the subsidized? Subsidized. 
subsidized loan of how much? 8 million. We have the interest rate on the loan. Unless otherwise stated, the interest becomes the risk free rate of return. The risk free rate is the, the return from the treasury bills and the treasury bonds. And treasury bills, the treasury bonds, so the loans. So if they are silent for the interest rate of the loan, we use the RF. So therefore, our interest is going to be 5.5% of 8 million. RF was 5.5, right? Which is that? Zero point four four. Zero point four four. We need the present value of interest tax sheet. The interest tax sheet is simply interest times tax rate, tax on interest. So we are having zero point four four times thirty percent. That is our interest tax sheet. So this one you multiply by the fifth, it's only one year. And we discount using the RF, which is 5.5% for one year. So we sum at this 0 0.132. Times 5.5% one year. Unless you're checking for the formula in the table. Formula in the same one point one plus R is one negative ten. And yeah, you can either, either use one plus R raised to one negative ten or one over one plus R. The PV. So it is one point zero five five raised to one negative one. Zero point zero point nine four seven nine zero point one two five. One to five. So imagine you need to repeat the same when the loading gives you that number is one. Number is So we have the unsubsidized loan. Which is of shipping 10 million. So for the 10 million, we have the interest, which is still 5.5% uh, of 10 million. Can you multiply by 30% there? Yeah. Then we discount using 0 0.9479. Oh, what? Just a minute. We're going to interest rates now, still. I put my new Russia kind of. This up to the store. Interest rate check for 5.5 is 6 percent. Sorry for that. So this is 6 percent, 2 percent below. Thank you. Sorry for that. So the focal, focal, six percent of eight million. What's the duration? It becomes drop it, drop it for eight. 
So the 0 0.48 is going up to Java. Next, that chip has it. Zero point. Zero point. One for four. Then the number of the in here. Like zero point nine four seven nine. Because you always discount using the R F. Zero point. One three six five eight. The nearly the hypo subsidized the check is the eight percent. So eight percent of ten that is zero point eight from what's wrong. Our best case NPP was 24.08. 24.08. Then we less present value of issue costs. So we found the issue cost on equity and issue cost on debt. And already in present value terms, so I have enough discount channel. Your equity was at 0 0.83. 0 0.83, then your debt 0 point, 0 0.101. Then we add the present value of interest tax shield. I love to know there's a problem somewhere at this function. So now by 10 million strongest are lucky. So now for the of them, we need a bread skill. So half back, kindly, I join the figure half back. The total amount raised from there to 10 point one hour. I think that. So this should be 10 point one zero one. The total amount raised from debt is 10 million. Plus the, plus the issue cost to 0 0.1 of 1 to 1. We have to raise the 100 percent, 10 million plus 0 0.1 of the issue cost. Now that one did not have the issue cost. The 8 million made a shade of the issue cost. So the E plus much more than issue still. That's much more than issue. So that will have 0 0.1365 plus that one we need to change a little bit. So 8% of 10.101 times 0 0.3 times that.
which gives us 0 0.0. 0 0.229, 229. Okay. So, Kaja, FPP is always a little bit complex and tiresome. So, if you do plus 0 0.1365, you get 0 0.366. So how can we adjust the present value? Which four minus is on bit plus that is in the positive. Three. Wait. Five one five. Let's document it. That's good. And because of that, doing together, it takes a bit of the time. Good. So let's look at the now part three of it. I go part first paper. Good. Now part three of that, <coughs> at least part one in China. Part three five to Part three five So part That's where we are heading now. As we are saying, part three to Lemaire, part three five to Lemaire, at least part is a theory. So that, so that the equation is balanced to get the three marks. Propose three circumstances under which the NPV may be preferred to the NPV approach as a method of evaluating the capital investment project. So advantages of NPV over NPV. And just highlight them. Number one, advantages of NPV over NPV. So number one, we say NPV, NPV. Considers both NPV adjusted present value, considers both the investment, considers both the investment and financing aspects of the project. Considers both investment and the finance and financing aspects of the project. When NPV only considers when net present value, NPV only considers investment aspect of the project. When NPV only considers the investment aspect of the project. When you talk about NPV, there is nothing to do with the issue costs. NPV always be told about initial outlay is 48 million. How did the company get the 48 million? No one bothers to talk about it. Because spelling up on the initial outlay, annual net cash flows, terminal cash flows. How did you arrive? How did we get the 48? Adjusted present value considers that fact. In getting the initial outlay, the company used internal funds, the company used the rights issue, and the company used the long term debt. This is has it to come because it's a We have to incur some costs in getting them. Number two, another benefit of NPV. NPV considers, NPV considers the risk specific to the project. NPV considers the risk specific to the project. Things, things. Each project is evaluated. Each project is evaluated using its own cost of capital using its own cost of capital, i.e. unlevered KE, unlevered KE. When NPV, when NPV uses WSCC, 
when NPV uses WSCC to evaluate all projects. Uses WSCC to evaluate all projects. Number three. MPV appreciates that. MPV appreciates that. Issue posts are incurred. Issue posts are incurred. To raise the required initial outlay. Issue posts are incurred to raise the required initial outlay. When NPV, when NPV ignores this fact, when NPV ignores this fact, I part B, part B, and self limited. <coughs> That's all limited. Never miss a my commander that will be That's all limited is a juice processing farm which is sold solely equity financed. So currently the farm has no debt. And if it has no debt, is it levered or unlevered? It is unlevered. Still. Uh -huh. The company's board of directors are considering diversifying their operations by entering into the soda processing industry. Now, very important, we are not interested in where we are. We are interested in where we are, where we are going to invest. Because we are not looking for, the, we are not making a decision based on where we are currently, but we are making a decision based on where we are going to invest, right? Additional information, the current unlevered equity beta, unlevered equity beta is 1.4 for Dunsoft Limited, and 1.5 for the soda processing industry, respectively. So the unlevered beta in soda processing, who will not let them up with first? No. So we're not interested with the 1.4, but we're interested with the 1.5, where we are going to invest. The gearing in the soda processing industry is on average 40%. Gearing is about debt. So when debt is 40%, equity is? Hence, the capital structure comprises 40% debt and 60% equity. The examiner had an option of forgetting about the last statement. Akshakwambia gearing is 40%, then you should know it's 40% debt, 60% equity. The return on the market portfolio is 15%, and the risk free rate of return is 12%. Debt finance is considered the risk free. The Hamada model should be used to determine the levered equity beta. Hamada model, relatively adeka ya bana Gina. Cost of equity will be determined using CAPEM. Tax is 30%. Recommend the suitable discounting rate for the new investment if the directors were to finance the new project as follows 20% debt and 80% equity. So the discount rate for the new investment. How do you get the discount rate? Discount rate equals what? WSC. Which equals to? WK plus what? WDKD, we are just forward. We are just for that. Yeah. So therefore, we need to look at, uh, we already have the asset beta. The asset beta for all firms in the same industry is always equal. Right? The bar, the asset beta for all, for all, for all firms in the same industry is always equal. But when we bring in now debt, we have to, we need not to calculate the equity, the equity better. So therefore, I can have here, uh, do I use the weights for the values? Let me use the weights. I have the weight of equity, I have the weight of debt. The 
then I need to get the BE. BE equals to BA times, I mean, it's the value of equity. Because we are looking for the BE, BE plus my equal to one, but your date in a proper marriage. So BE plus BD, we are just for tax. Then we divide by what? B. Yeah. You remember the bar, you get to find a tail. You look at the bar, which for the pair, times the value of equity over the value of equity plus the value of debt. We are just for what? So it's just mean that the E is above, we only need to memorize one. Once you memorize how to get the bar, which after the pair, he na kuja ju, he kuja chini, and you are good to go. It's even more easier than needing to be proud of the first one. Lakini kama kana umana, fortunately the examiner was said generous. Adienda, adienda katisani. Aka kupea kwa formula BL, ya Hamada model. BL equals to PU plus blah blah blah. That's all. It's just another version of this. So I need to get the BE. After getting the BE, can I get the KE? RF plus RM minus times bar of pay times pay because the farm has debt. Right? Then finally, I get the WSCC, which is where K plus WDKD, we are just for what? We are just for tax. So kill the two bags of one story. So that the first one, when debt is 20%, equity is what? 80%. So debt is 20, equity is 80. Can I get the debt? Asset better where we are going to invest in that. We're going to invest in soda processing factory industry, right? Asset better on 1.5 still. So therefore, our bar is 1.5 times the value of equity. We can either use 80 or we use 0 0.8. Because to your value somehow it doesn't matter. So we are having 80 plus debt is 20. We are just for tax. Divide by 80. What is the pay? One point seven six two five. So you can do one point seven six. Yeah. So that K E R F to Konai to my pay off. We say twelve. R F is twelve. R M return on the market is fifteen minus twelve takes one point seven six. What is our K E? No. 
you get what risk premium. Risk premium is what is 15 minus 12. But the return on the market is 15. Sometimes exam that just confuses you. I always need a portfolio. If the, if the, if the job is one portfolio is not your sweetheart, you start panicking. But the most important thing is the return on the market, not the market risk premium. So what do we have? 17.28. So that is 17.28, the WSEC, the weight of equity is 0 0.8, times 17.28, the weight of debt is 0 0.2, KD, well, summer debt is considered to be risk free. So it's KD 12. I'll have to adjust for what? Adjust for tax. Wait, two times twelve times zero point seven plus this one. So that is the first bit, the four months. Then you look at the second part. When debt is 50, equity is also 50. So weight of debt becomes 50%, equity is also 50%. And we get the bar, we get the base, sorry. Asset better does not change. We said it's always constant for all firms in the industry. So our bar remains at 1.5. Value of equity is 50. Value of debt is 50. We adjust for tax. We divide by 50. Two point five five. Two point five five, right? Aha. Uh -huh. KD nine twelve. Rf is twelve. Rm is fifteen minus twelve. Then two point five five. Two point five five.
19.65. And therefore, the work is it 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 times 19.65 plus 0 0.5 times 12, we are just for tax. Zero to five. That is question one. Question one, part A was a little bit heavy because of the adjusted pricing. So, because of the adjusted present value, it's always so important. I love you can imagine. Come on, the point that I can package into the loan amortization schedule to, to deliver the more, more, more involving. At least, what let that come out of was later eight months, but later 20 months, or something about 15. Then it would be worth it, the months, you know, or what is the effort required. To angle but question two. Let's check question two together. <coughs> now, but A. They're asking us to examine. So, part one was talking about uh, 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 the finance, uh, uh, advanced financing decisions. Actually, the entire of part one of question one is advanced financing decision. That's the topic of advanced financing decision. Question two, I can see it's on portfolio and financial construction a little bit. Yeah, question, question one, part A is a advanced financing decision, part B is about financial reconstruction. So let's look at question two. In Azubunzia portfolio, part A and B. Examine three practical weaknesses of the APM as used in portfolio theory. Weaknesses are the same as assumptions. So assumptions of APM, assumptions from weaknesses of adjusted of, of uh, a bitrate pricing model. So number one, it assumes that. I just say it assumes that. Then you put full stop. The number one. Number one, capital markets are perfect. Capital markets are perfect. In that, in that transaction costs do not exist. Capital markets are perfect in that transaction costs do not exist. And anytime you're having an assumption on capital markets being perfect, the second assumption should be capital markets are efficient. So number two, capital markets are efficient. Capital markets are efficient. In that, in that all information, all information is readily available. All information is readily available. Another assumption. Investors are price takers. Investors are price takers. Stop risk averse. Investors are price takers. Stop risk averse. In that, they would only accept additional risk. They would only accept additional risk. If assured, of adequate compensation. 
if assured of adequate compensation. That is the question. Send it back to Albert Onchiri. Albert Onchiri, a finance manager at Wema Limited, is considering investing in shares of Safari Airways, a company quoted at the Securities Exchange. He's considering investing in those shares, no problem. The returns on the Securities Exchange Index and Safari Airways share are shown below for the five possible states of the economy that might prevail next year. So we have the economic condition, rapid expansion, moderate, no growth, moderate contraction and serious contraction, probabilities to Bonazo Harbor. Anytime you're having probabilities, the total should be all should always be one. You know, to Nanzaga na Kwangalia, you do come as well you error, one day anything you cut a free max. Total probability, you can't say one. Then GP also when it comes with the dairy, so that you get the free three months. I believe that is one. Market return and we have Safari Airways return for two months. Expected return of Safari Airways shares. What is the expected return? The only value switch at Yako portfolio equals to. The summation of returns times what? Returns times the probabilities. That's how I get your market. When I get your safari airways. So you're having the returns of 13 to the probability of 0 0.15 plus 10 probability of 0 0.35 plus 8 probability of 0. 5 plus 4 to the probability of 0 0.15 and finally we have 2 to the probability of 0 0.1. So expected return of Safari Airways shares So at least we get the two months. Which one? Yeah. Oh, the first one. The first one is 13, sorry, not 20. The answer is okay. You know, the idea come on my hand. So, thank you for that. Page point two five. So, thank you. Ah, we go to part two. But we are being asked about. The correlation between the returns on the securities exchange with the returns on Safari Airways shares. That's about the correlation coefficient. How do you get the correlation coefficient between safaris and the market? There's something in the mind? The synchronous for the body. Covariance? So covariance between the security and the market divided by standard deviation of the um, S times standard deviation of the market. Right, 
สาวัตมินุบัยสนิทกูสิ how to get this performance of S N covariance of S N equals to I start I'm starting summation I continue Returns of S minus expected returns of S. Returns of the market minus expected returns of the market times what? And for this reason, I need also to get the expected return of the market. Yeah. So therefore, expected return of the market. I have 25 with a probability of 0.15, right? 25 times 0.15, 20 times 0.35, plus 15, 0.25, plus 10, 0.15, And finally, four zero point one. That would be six point sixteen point four sixteen point four. So therefore, covariance we have the returns of S the person is thirteen minus expected return of eight point two five square. Sorry, this is the summation. If we bring the second one. Yeah, M is 25 minus 16.4. Probability of is 0. Point. One probability that supports all of them. Yeah. yeah. We add the second one. The second return is 10 minus 8.25. The second on this other side is 20 minus 16.4. Probability of is 0. Point. Three, five. Right? So then that we are at, we are at 8. So 8 minus 8.25. We are at 15. So 15 minus 16.4. Probability at 0.25. So then that we are at 4. So 4 minus 8.25. Now, who can get any gap? 10. 10 minus 16.4. Probability is 0. 0.15. 0. Then finally, we have 2 minus 8.25. And this other side is 4. 4 minus 16.4. Probability of 0. 0.1. I just open the brackets as you close. Philosophy. Open the brackets. 13 minus 8.25 close. Open again 8.5 minus 16.4 close. Then 0.15 plus 
Pagamos. What about the standard dimension of S? How to get the standard dimension of S? Square root of what? That also not the square root of variance, but it's the square root of the summation of returns of s minus what? Expect the returns of s square times what? The probability. Village which y is near s. This one square times the probability. This one square times the probability. So therefore, we are having uh, 13 minus 8.25. Squared with a probability of 0 0.15, right? Plus the second one is 10 minus 8.25 squared, probability of 0 0.35. Plus the third one is 8. 8 minus 8.25 squared times 0 0.25. Plus, here we get 34. 4 minus 8.25 squared, probability of 0 0.15. And finally, we have 2 minus 8.25 squared times 0 0.10. So your answer will be now in a better square root. So let me help you something there. Let me help this. No learning is a continuous process. 8.25 is common all through. So when you are called, you will have 8.25 equals. You can also see if you can take some little time on it. So 8.25 equals, right? So you open the brackets. You will have 13 minus answer. Close the brackets. Squared times 0.15. 
right? Plus, Uspanya equals plus, open the brackets, 10 minus answer, squared times 0 0.35. Because answer equals 8.25. And your answer to apply all of Yeah. Like that, plus, open the brackets, H minus answer, squared, close the bracket squared, times 0 0.25. Plus, open the brackets, 4 minus answer, close the bracket squared, times 0 0.25. Thank you. In a prevent, we can figure 8.25 on a You have it, for a model as your answer, then you just be applying it. Seven point. That's the square root. Square root. Ah, yeah, but you before the square root. Eleven. Before the square root. Eleven point eight zero. So can I need to zero nine? There's another zero. Or zero eight. Seven five. Seven nine. Ah, uh, and the square root becomes three point three point three three. Three point three three. Okay. So we need to do the standard deviation of the other, the standard deviation of the markets. Standard deviation of the markets. The same concept. The market is 25 minus 16.4 squared, the probability is 0 0.15 plus. The second one is 20 minus 16.4 squared, probability of 0 0.35. Yeah. Plus, the third one is that 15 minus 16.4 squared, probability at that 0.25. Here you have 10 minus 16.4 squared. The probability is 0 0.15. Uh -huh. Then we have, uh, we have the fifth one. The four. So plus. 4 minus 16.4 squared times 0 0.1. The square root, I get that. So 16.4 is common, say the 16.4 equals. And I work with it as my answer. Life becomes easier. Shapata.
What we have before the square? So before this prayer, so that you can that seven point six four and a square root six point one four. So therefore, correlation coefficient of that security at the market becomes covariance will go something 20.25 20.25 divided by the standard deviation of S 3.33 times the standard deviation of 6.14. What is the correlation coefficient? You do roughly one. Then, so that is the six marks. Then, better to adjust over six marks or after two marks, the rule at least of compensation. But it's a comment on the result of JDB1 about perfectly positive. Perfectly negative or uncorrelated? Perfectly positive, as simple as that. So you simply say that the correlation coefficient is perfectly positive. Correlation coefficient is perfectly positive. Hence, hence it does not lead it does not lead to any change in the risk. It does not lead to any change in the risk. So the portfolio, whose correlation coefficient is positive one, it is perfectly positive and such portfolio does not affect the risk of the investment. So it does not affect the risk in any, in any way. That's how perfectly negative is the best. Because that one will minimize the risk. Perfectly positive, it does not affect the risk of the investment. So it's not a good, it's not a good portfolio to maintain. That's all. Hi. Part three of that. Part four actually. Albert is thinking of undertaking an alternative investment, but similar to that of Safari Airways. Similar to that of Safari Airways, no problem. Safari Airways shares. If the risk-free rate of return is 10%, determine 
the minimum required rate of return of these investments. How do you get the minimum required rate of return? Talking about the return or is talking about the risk? It's talking about the return. And the minimum return, we talk about SML or CML. Because the return is RF plus. It's not about the portfolio return. Portfolio return, don't get score, the return times the weight. We don't have the portfolio here, we're looking at the securities. So therefore, our return equals to SML or CML. The multiple choice question on the SML means an SML. I'm on a panel on a panel timing on a Mazella ML. But it's about a security. It's about the security. So therefore, it is what? SML, which equals to? RF, so it is not going to RF plus RM times what? So, so to what you call a head up on a bed is just the better. Yeah. To make our RF from a seven year ten percent, the risk free rate is ten percent. We have the expected return on the market, 16.4, right? So we need to get what? The better. How do we get the better of the security? As you know, the better. Better of the security equals to covariance. Between the security and the market, divide by. I finished what I started. Variance of what? The market. I like to refine the upper in upside here, but that is always so easy on the board. But let's, let's say it's not easy still. It took a lot of practice, right? It took a lot of practice. I know these things you can really practice them before the exam. I know that it was a mission. Variance to banana. 20 point. 20.25. We have the variance of the market. I'm at 26.14 square, no problem. Let me make let me, let me not make life difficult. 6.14 square. So what is the data? Zero point five four. Zero point five four. So therefore, SML becomes RF in equal ten. Expected return on the market sixteen point sixteen point four minus ten. You multiply by zero point five four, and you get your three months. Which is nothing.
10 point 13 point for sales So it's finished by C. Finished by C. Explain the following terms as used in corporate restructuring and the organization. Leverage by hours. For the first time, and you know the meaning of leverage. Leverage is about what? Leverage is about debt. Buy out? So it is where an acquisition is financed by debt, as simple as that. Leverage by out. So just make a statement and you say this. So leverage by out is saying. It is where, it is where debt is used to finance. It is where debt is used to finance. The acquisition, the acquisition of the assets of the target farm. The acquisition of the assets of the target farm. Debt is purchase consideration. Debt is purchase consideration. Then we have the second one, which is a uh, agentis as promoted. So when you're when you are able to define what Z score is, Z score and agenti, the definition can be the same. So just say this. It is a model of predicting corporate failure. It is a model of predicting corporate failure. Which uses which uses different ratios. Which uses different pressures multiplied by multiplied by some constants multiplied by some constants. As per a predicted, as per a predicted sequence. But the predicted sequence as simple as that, and you get your two months. <laughs> because it's also an example, another model of predicting corporate failure together with the Altmans. Kuna Altmans, kuna agentes, there is use of financial ratios, equal use of the stock market analysis. So it's another example of a model used to predict corporate failure. And it was easy to see Yes, yes. It was there. Yes. That basically means that you are also are not complete. <laughs> Hi, right. can we try number three or we need a short break? We'll try first of all. Can you manage another break still? Hi. Slow low engagement to require AFM. Only for engagement after After August. Alright, so. So let's see what number three is all about. So we are told that uh, Modigliani and Miller suggested that real world considerations, primarily institutional constraints on high leverage, would prevent firms from approaching 100% debt levels. English means it your petition. Giving reasons to explain whether you agree with the above statement.
Uh -huh. Remember, under the financing decisions, capital structure theories, MM, the multiplicity emulated MM1, MM2, MM3, and MM4. There is nowhere we say, there is nowhere a farm can be financed by debt 100%. The farm is either unlevered or the farm is levered. If you are unlevered, then it's a hundred percent equity, not debt. Yeah. So you either have a hundred percent of equity, or you have a certain percentage of equity and the remaining percentage of, of debt. So that is what this person was trying to tell us, and he wants us to confirm that statement. So let's just say this. According to NM, According to MM, a farm can either be a farm can either be levered or unlevered. A farm can either be levered or unlevered. I.e., it is either financed by. It is either financed by equity 100% is either financed by equity 100% into brackets and leave it, or or financed partly by equity or financed partly by equity and partly by debt Or finance partly by equity or partly by debt into brackets levered. Into brackets levered. We'll stop and conclude by saying this. For this reason, for this reason, a hundred percent debt finance, a hundred finance, a hundred percent debt finance is not possible. 100% debt finance is not possible. Here you know, performance. You started using examples. You started to mess them up. Partly debt, partly equity. That one is enough. That one is enough. And by the way, when, uh, when, uh, when this exam is being marked, life is very simple. That kind of a question, what happened in the exam room? We were only looking for the liver and the liver. To ensure what farm, farm we call liver, it's gonna debt like equity, right? A debt like that. Now, farm we call unlevered, it's gonna equity like that. So that confirm to us that it's true, the the one hundred percent finance can only apply to equity, not debt. That is what we are looking for. So, liver or unlevered? I come up any end that we achieve year or and year. Those are the things we are looking for to get to give you the formats. But others refuse to give the, to, to mention the, the two terms. Why one of them? Money and Chemaswadi. Ah, to the part B first. To the part B, to one An unlevered farm operates in a perfect market and has a net operating profit that is EBIT of shillings 4 million. So EBIT is 4 million. The required rate of return on assets of farms in this industry is 16%. 10 percent So is the farm levered or unlevered? Does it have debt? Uh -huh. So is it levered or unlevered? Look at the first statement. So does it have debt? But it's time for break. It is unlevered, so it has no debt. Right? Unlevered, so it has no debt. Ah, we finish part B, then you have a short break, short commercial break. Now, unlevered farm operates in a perfect market. The farm is unlevered, very important. So, meaning it's all equity financed. Yeah. It's operating in a perfect market and has a bit of 4 million.
The required rate of return on assets of firm in this industry is 68%. Will I be right when I say that 68% is the cost of equity of that firm? Which is also the same as the WSEC of that firm. Because it's all equity financed, there is no debt. Senior. So the cost of equity of the unlevered firm is the same as of, is the same as its W S C C because high net debt. Senior Thank you. Assume that the firm issues should is 10 million worth of debt with a required rate of return of 14.5% and uses the proceeds to repurchase outstanding shares. There are no corporate taxes. There are no corporate or personal taxes. So if there are no corporate taxes, and you're talking about an M, should be an M what? M M M M1. M M1. And for information, M M1 is the same as the net operating income. That's come my job. Same as M or I, right? Good. And it's the only capital structure theory that says capital structure financing decisions are irrelevant. Whether we use debt or we don't use debt, the value of the firm or the WSEC are not expected to change. Capital structure decisions are irrelevant. MM1 or NOR. Now, the market value required, they want us to get the market value and the required rate of return of the firm's shares before the repurchase transaction according to MM1. So they want us to get the market value before. So before the firm is what? The firm is at labor, right? So how do we get the value? of an labor firm under MM1 value of an labor firm equals to EBIT divided by what? The WS. We have the EBIT. Is it four million? And we have the WSC of an labor is the same as the cost of equity of an labor, right? Which is rapid. That's 16%. So therefore, value of an labor firm equals to 4 million divided by 0 0.16. And we get our two months. So 4 over 0 0.16, 25 million. The number two, the market value and the required rate of return of this firm. And if you look at the market value alone, the market value are required. Well, they also want to get the required. So the required rate of return is WSC of unlevered. So ready to now. Because the cost of equity of unlevered about 16 percent. This is M M1. Let me get back to the Performance. The market value and required rate of return of this firm's remaining shares after the repurchase transaction according to MM Proposition 2. So now MM2. MM2. Now according to MM2, according to MM2, 
Thank you for validating my farm. It was good. It has say cost value of input of an input. You can check on a corporation tax here. But unfortunately, in finance, you don't get the tax rate. Atuja poor the tax rate. But you, even if it has the corporation tax, tax is still zero. So, see, finance, you don't get. Assume tax rate 30%. Examiner, I get one year. So, we know that it would be a bit. It will be a bit. We are just for tax. We divide by what? The cost of input, right? And then to now, and then to. So that tax is zero. So it's a bit of a bit of a cost of input. So our EBIT is four million. Even if you do it, it will be one minus zero. Divide by zero point one. So you go back to 25 million. So that is still five million, right? Uh -huh. So they wanted us to get the market value and the required rate of return of this farm's remaining shares after the repurchase. After the repurchase. And we are told, assume that the farm uses 10 million worth of debt with the required rate of return of 14.5% and uses the proceeds to repurchase outstanding shares. So can we let's Less the value of it. The amount that was used, we will purchase shares valued at how much? Return M. So the outstanding outstanding value of equity. Would be one point two. Should be fifteen. Fifteen million. Fifteen million. So the twenty five million would be like you uh it would come at the value of the total farm. So that out of twenty five million, now I check up debt of ten million, equal to remain fifteen. So that is 10, equity is 15, the total is 25. They wanted us to get the value and they also wanted us to get the rate of return. Can we get the cost of equity of the levered farm now? Under MM2, cost of equity of the liver equals to? Cost of equity of unlevered plus? Risk premium. And how do you get the risk premium? K O minus. So something like K O minus K D. We multiply by what? Then to equity, we are just for for tax. That's the measure. Do you get that here? So K O minus K that the risk we have. So meaning our cost of equity of the labor will be the cost of equity of a labor plus cost of equity of a labor minus the cost of debt. Times debt over equity, we are just for. K to Bonai will equal sixteen percent. Cost of capital over labor is sixteen percent. Cost of debt, we have it. Let's go ahead. 
14.5. We have the value of x. So it was 10 million. And the value of equity? Is it 15 million? Tax is what? Tax is zero. So therefore, 16 plus 16 minus 14.5 times 10 over 15. I don't need to do 1 minus 10 because t is 0. Kanya yi esabu, ongeza kwa 16. That gives us the four marks. A break a dog. Sixty-seven? Ninety-five? Around eighty-five. A difference of 15%. So in your Russia, 15%. Sixty-seven? Yes, first of all, you can do a the first month is about 15. I will give you a point. I will give you a point. I think it was night. It was night. Uh, the first person. Fifty. As much is always maintained at fifty. Question one was a little bit ish ish. In your Russia, they are your respect of question one. But uh, what happens is, it's not enough to send at fifty. So the paper is hard. It's not like a form. Okay, to mark. You know, na the theory, theory, we make some little sense, not too much sense, some little sense that you get all the marks on it. So that's why you always advise that don't leave any theory question and answer. Still. But don't try for full as well. At least write something that, that relates to the English on that question, right? Yeah. So there's some little sense in it, you get those marks. Anyway, let's conclude. We are in part what? Part C. We are being told to summarize four disadvantages of using futures contracts as, far as financial instruments. So disadvantages of using futures contracts. So I can just make a brief statement by saying this. Futures contract, futures contract are financial Agreements are financial agreements. Are financial agreements that are entered into that are entered into today with an implementation debt with an implementation debt in future. With an implementation debt in future at a predetermined price, at a predetermined price, known as exercise price, exercise, exercise price, known as exercise price.
the limitations include the limitations include so you have number one the investors always have no control the investors always have no control over the future the investors always have no control over the future since it is uncertain since it is uncertain so the future is always uncertain you're entered into an agreement today you're supposed to exercise maybe you either buy or sell in future the the, the, the amount the, the price is already determined you might end up making a loss or a profit because the future is uncertain number two number two the exercise prices the exercise prices are likely to fluctuate are likely to vary sorry are likely to vary with the actual prices in future are likely to vary with the actual prices in future leading leading either a loss or a gain Either a loss or a gain or a gain. Another limitation. There is a likelihood. There is a likelihood that the asset prices would reduce in future. There is a like there is a likelihood that asset prices would reduce in future. Due to increased inflation, due to increased inflation risks, due to increased inflation risks and market fluctuations, and market fluctuations. And give the last one. It assumes that it assumes that investors are always risk averse. Sorry, investors are always risk takers, not risk averse. Are always risk takers, which is not always the case. Which is not always the case. But then by taking that risk, uh, you can argue it in the way. As always, come back to that. In a different, William when you announce up, he's a risk taker. William when you announce up, he's a risk averse. So you talk about an investor being a risk taker, then you're looking at that, and we're talking about an investor who is selling. Because he doesn't mind taking the risk so that in future, the, the market is likely to be okay. I'm ready to lose. So, yeah. So even when you have another point, investors being risk averse, it depends you're arguing from which point. So part part C, part D, part D to my listen. We are told that the current market price per ordinary share of Kanga Limited is 58. Mm -hmm. The market price of Kanga Limited is 58 currently. Currently is in this spot. The price today, right? A call option exists on the company's shares with an exercise price of 52 and six months to maturity. Exercise price 52, six months to maturity is about option. So we have this portrait. This portrait is 50, 58. Exercise price with 52. What is our time? Six, six months. So six months, time must always be in what? Time must always be in years. So time is 0 0.5, a half. Time must always be in years. The option can only be exercised for yeah. maturity. That is, it is a routine option. The RF is 
so R twenty six percent, and the variance of the rate of return in the shares is fifteen percent. Variance is it standard deviation square or not square? Standard deviation square is the variance, right? Which equals to that fifteen percent. Then uh, using Black's Scholes option pricing model, estimate the value of the whole option. Sometimes it doesn't. It's trying to be. And by that point, for me, it's only about six months. That's a shame. I'm going to get a new one for you. I should not be applied. Now, because the Makua, if you put the value of the whole option, you know what? S N B one minus exercise price E N B two. Let me let me let me get it a little bit simple. We actually get some negative divided by exponential raised to our heart. That's why here we nominate it when divided by so that to avoid that kind of negative. Now we just move on to it. So. The way that a negative, but you can also put it up, no problem, because you can see it's exponential raised to a negative part. So I'm avoiding that negative of the data half a chain. Let's make life a little bit easier. Okay. Yeah. K is our E. K is our E. Strike price. Or we use K. What's our slip? Hi. Now, the sum of D1 equals to what? We have to examine the person generates. The sum of E into E divided by what? E divided by S S. Now, which is the S over E. S over E. Right. Then we add what? The risk free rate of return plus I can do 0 0.5 times t. I'm going to find a t over, over 2 is of the state that's up. No. Times standard deviation squared times what? t for it. Then everything I divide by what? Standard deviation times square root of what? Of t. Standard deviation over two. Standard deviation over two. Fine. Enough to calculate the value of that. Clear. Spot price in that. Fifty-eight. Exercise price in that. Fifty-two. Plus, we have the risk free rate of return. 0 .0 0 0.06 plus 0 0.5 we have the variance variance is 0 0.0.15 the time we got 0 0.5 everything we divide by how do you get the standard deviation square root of 0.15 times square root of 0. Point. Mistake number one is when you do in and you don't put these into brackets. You'll be doing in of 58 alone. So you, when you figure in, you open the brackets, 58 over 52, close the brackets. And E is in the count, right?
When you do in, let's move forward brackets, 58 over 52, close the brackets plus, open the brackets to be late for 0 0.06 plus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.15, close the brackets, type 0 0.5. Then you can divide by single brackets. Open the brackets, square root of 0 0.15 times square root of 0 0.5 plus the brackets. We have our new one. 0.522. Subject to confirm the shirt, it's a Have you got syntax error? If I delete it, here is zero point six four five six five because we need two decimal places after all. Okay, six four five for the sake of B two. Now, for me, it will be a point B two equals to B one minus the denominator of B one. Right? The one minus it's minus the denominator of the one. So minus standard deviation then square root of t. So 0 0.645 minus square root of 0 0.15 times square root of 0 0.5. What is our d2? Zero point six seven. Zero point three seven. Zero point three seven. So therefore, I think that is okay. We need N B one and we need N B two. Both of our B C S N B one minus E N B two. Normal distribution of B one and normal distribution of B two. I think a table that has that has a mountain that I know which one. That's a normal distribution table. Now, when dealing with D one, the normal distribution, first of all, these signs matters a lot. This one is a positive zero point six four five. This one is also a positive, right? So if it is a positive, then our M D one is always zero point five plus. 0 0.5 plus. If it would be a negative, then we have 0 0.5 minus. What it means is this. On this mountain, when it's the positive, then it, is a, it appears on this. It's 0 0.5 plus. So 0 0.5 plus. If our D1 and D2 is a positive. But if our D1 or D2 is a negative, then it would be something that is less than 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 is here, it would be somewhere here. So, so first of all, be guided by the signs of D1 and D2. But fortunately, it's a positive. So meaning our D1 and D2 is something that is above 0 0.5.
So if, it would, if it were negative, it would be something that is below 0 0.0.5. Quite right clear. Yeah. Having seen that, we now go to the table. When you go to that table, again, be very careful the kind of table you prepare. Examiner and a partner of options B. And as I have prepared table, and you have three quarters. I'm going to prepare table, and you have only a quarter. Like in that one, I can see I'm a shade a quarter of a What you read in the table is always a representative of the shaded region. What is, what is given in the table is the area under the region that is shaded. So, so like in our case, 71 is 0 0.5 plus, right? But here, table I'm a shade to a so to sum up your table, 0 0.65 to about the pattern between here and here. If it makes some sense. So what is 0 0.65 in that table? Zero point two four two two. So zero point two four two two is from here to here. So one is zero point five. So it's zero point five plus. 0 0.24 to 2. So I put 0.74 to 2. And after 0 0.37, 1, 3. So it is plus 0 0.5, right? So that is 0. 6443. Yeah. three quarters. Like I can show you one. Who put you mark at the same thing? 2017 there. Seventeen or twenty sixteen, somewhere there. That's the Somewhere. Yeah. Eight, eight forty seven. Okay. That is November twenty eighteen. Eight forty seven. November twenty eighteen. When you check that table, you go blood. Like you know, you expand the tone image if you are in your crazy dots. And it's three quarters. Right? So when you look at that table, I know what I'm looking for. It is a positive, and it should be 0 0.5 plus something. So this table is already stressed 0 0.5 plus something. Right? So when you can apply your table, it's a man, 0 0.65. What do I get? Zero point seven four two. To say it there, so the shaded region is what is represented in the table. So you compare what is in the table with what you are looking for. That's how we are looking for zero point five plus. Here table already shaded region zero point five plus. So if someone have got my answer, they make my ND one and my ND two. So can we finish the PC? So 
therefore, BC equals to SND1, that is 58 times 0 0.74 minus exercise price is 52 times ND2, 0 0.6443. We divide it by what? Exponential raised to risk free rate is 0 0.06. And the time is 0 0.4. That's here happen. You deal with issue. I have got the explanation here now. Apology E. I would prefer to use shift. I prefer to use shift because shift is in the end of. Already shining for exponential rest for x. And you see, we are raising. When you use alpha, it's a bit of raise. Too much work for nothing. So you do shift, then in. Right? Then make sure this one is in brackets. So shift in, open the bracket. 0 0.06 times 0 0.5, close the brackets, equals. Then pick up with such a chart, 52 times 0 0.6443 divided by x. Then finally, I can pick up with such a chart, 58 times 0 0.7422 minus x. To get it without rounding off errors. Eight point five three. Ten point five three. Ten point five three. I think that is it. It's sixty percent. You can say with what? According to so that uh, that is a that is a good work enough for day one. So we can uh, we can do it again next week, God willing. Yeah, we'll do it again next week. Next week. Next week we should be finishing the three two questions. Then after that we agree on whether to go topic by topic or sitting by sitting. Sitting by sitting, we've already agreed. Sitting by sitting, topic by topic. Actually, we can even take this approach. We've done last sitting now last month in the final. Because we prefer to finish day two hours. Then we can now agree. We do. Even if it's topic by topic, we can set aside given number of sittings that we must do. Because there's a topic in each sitting. Yeah, so there's a topic in each sitting. We can decide and say, maybe we say, when the letter 2021, we wrote a to skip 2020, we have to have a to have to so you can have that agreement. You can even go topic by topic, but at the end of the day, we shall do a question in each and every city. Questions. Yeah. By the way, I couldn't have so much. I couldn't this class. Yeah. Come on, so many to clarify to one, two, ten questions. Yes. So can we say that uh, next week we finish this, then we continue with questions in which topic? Because we can identify a topic to end up solving. At least we'll be your topic to go to the next video. Which topic? Investment decisions, financing decisions, portfolio, not the nearest which cut you Portfolio doesn't miss. Even investment doesn't miss. <laughs> 
it's only that portfolio kikujo no longer to expected return portfolio risk but investment decision is a kujo not because of kujo investment decisions what's that financing we started financing decisions so so go through the notes on financing decisions we'll finish the remaining two questions then we will check up the financing the advanced financing decisions remember it is a three in one topic WSCC, WFCC, capital structure theories, and a special topics in financing. If you are able to repeat your topic, then we shall identify the questions. See you on Saturday weekend. <laughs>